just a, it, it was a song that really gave me a lot of comfort because I know where he's at today. And, uh, and it has been a, it's been a struggle because I, I've let many of you know that every, just about every Sunday morning or sometime during the day, <clears throat> I would talk to my dad. And he would always leave and have the same words, Brother Terrell. He said, just preach the word. Just preach. And he preached it faithfully for over 50 years. And uh, so there's a lot of things and a lot of habits. They say that I'm the most like him out of all the boys. Uh, maybe I'll grow out of it. I don't know. Uh, my mom's here this morning. I learned this song, and I know that uh, I won't do it justice. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a very hard song on my range anyway. But, uh, so if I mess up or start crying, that's, that's okay. But it's, it's, a, it's a really, uh, just listen to the words of it. It, many of you have lost loved ones this year, um, and it's tough. It's tough to lose a loved one physically, uh, but if they're saved, we know where they are. And so I'm going to try to sing this song, uh, I Sure Miss You. Uh, it's one. <clears throat> I took for granted when to hear your voice was just a call away. Oh, what I give for just some time to say the things that slip my mind. There's so much now I'd really like to say. But I can never go back when We did the things we did back then I store those precious memories in my mind I'll take what you've instilled in me And try to be all I can be Walk the path that you left behind But I sure miss you Life will never be the same With you not here Each passing day Has brought much pain But with God's grace My strength remains I sure miss you but heaven's sweeter with you there. The little things that seem so small are now like gold in a memory vault. I cherish every one I have of you. I can see and recognize the part you played to shape my life. I often see you in the things I do. In God's design and master plan, we saw the hurting hearts of men as we would say goodbye. So with our family and friends, we'll be together once again. We'll view all the heaven's splendor hand in hand. But I still miss you. Life will never be the same with you not here. Each passing day has brought much pain But with God's grace my strength remains I sure miss you 
but heaven's sweeter with you there. see my daughter here and her little new husband. Good to see Randy here this morning. I know Randy's name now. Uh, Candace. Randy, Candace, you'll have to explain Randy to me. I know I'm crazy. Mom, you like that song?
She said, I didn't help her singing out by singing that song before we got up here. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love my kids. Y'all love your kids? Amen. Let's turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 19. The next two Sunday mornings, I'm going to be preaching on this subject out of Revelation chapter 19. Um, I know that many of you have probably studied through the book of Revelation, but I, I love to pick up in this part of the scripture. Of course, when you look at <clears throat> Revelation, you'll get it all summed up in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3. It says and make this, makes this statement, if you read this book, you will be blessed. We got children's chapel dismissed. Towns, keep them straight back there. All right. <clears throat> but how many of you you like to lose? Any none, none of us like to lose at anything, do we? How many of you any of you like to lose? I, I'm on I'm gonna let y'all in on something now. Wes, I know you appreciate this. I was raised up, and some of y'all are really not gonna like me when I say this because we didn't have participation trophies. Okay? I was raised up in a household, we were very competitive at everything we did. I mean, my sister, uh, and she's here this morning, I can talk about her, I know I talk about her sometimes, but she was raised with four brothers. She was tough. Even if you were a boy, you did not want to mess with her. I seen her on the bus one day, I didn't have to take up for her, she'd beat them down. But... Uh, but we were all competitive, even to my sister and to other, you know, and I, I, I was made to play sports with my older brothers, uh, and we couldn't afford to run around to every this field, this field, and this field. We played on the same teams. So when I finally got to play with somebody my own age, I was like, I turned to my dad. I'll never forget when he, when he took me to seventh grade football at Sheridan. I looked at him and I looked at the coaches, and I said, you mean I get to play with these little boys? <laughs> but we were competitive. And uh, second place was the first loser. As I said, Tony, I, 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 my child just got third place. Well, they're the second loser. <laughs> you know, and if I couldn't beat somebody, then I went home and I practiced and continued to practice until I could pretty, I, I'd either beat them or I would just give it up, you know. But understand, the book of Revelation, especially in this last part of this, you know, chapter 19, 20, 21, 22, I read, I read the back of the book, and we win. Amen. Amen? You think about that. And I know many of us have heard that, that slogan, or that sentence, or, or that statement. But folks, I read the back of the book, and we win. And folks, let me tell you something. We live in a world and we live in a society today that, yeah, that we are persecuted as Christians and, and people look at us and say, what is wrong with you? You're weird. Folks, you know how I feel about that. The Word of God says that we are a peculiar people. We are different. And if you're a Christian here this morning, we're weird. We're different. If you look like the world, folks, let me tell you something. You need to check up. So when you look at this Revelation chapter 19, you're going to notice what we have just come out of. Uh, I remember the day that I married Kim. She is my sweetheart. You know, uh, what an exciting and long away. How many of y'all remember your wedding day? Amen? Guys, you, every one of y'all better hold your hand up. It's, it's okay for, you know, that's something wrong with that. Amen? The women don't have to raise their hand. They can forget. But it's not okay for you guys to forget. Okay? Now, I can remember, you know, weddings are meant to be beautiful. They're, they're meant to be full of joy. And the marriage of the Lamb will be such an event. Amen? No one knows when this will happen. The Father has set the wedding date. Amen? And He has not whispered it to anyone Anyone who tries, listen to this, anyone who tries 
to set the date for his return is preaching heresy. Now in Revelation 19, the, the great tribulation comes to a close and the church comes to the most climatic time in all of its history and God chooses the picture of a marriage to illustrate that glorious moment when we become one with our Lord. Now, we're going to skip ahead. Look at Revelation 19 again. We're going to read verse 7 for right now, and then we're going to go back and read verse 1, start at verse 1, and then keep uh, continue to read. Now, I, I've divided this sermon up into two halves. I'm going to preach some of it this morning and some of it next Sunday morning. But look at verse 7. What does it say there? Everybody got your Bibles? Hold them up. I could be preaching. It's, it's deer season. I could be preaching out of Buckmasters for all you know. Amen? Look at verse 7. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and His wife has made herself ready. Now, Brother Tony, does that, what does that mean exactly? We're going to look at that. Now, the bride, uh, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, y'all listen to this, has made herself ready for the marriage to the Lamb. Now, one day Jesus told a parable about the marriage of the Lamb and gave uh, this admonition. I want you to turn in your Bibles back to Matthew chapter 25. We're just going to read a little bit of this. Matthew 25. <clears throat> Boy, isn't the Word of God sweet. Amen. Look at Matthew 25. I'm going to read verse 12 and verse 13. Y'all there? It says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And it goes on and it talks about, He gave them five talents and to another two in verse 15 and to another one to everyone. But folks, Jesus may come, and here's the main thought that I want you to get. Jesus can come at any moment. Folks, I've, I'm in one of them old missionary Baptist preachers that believes in the imminent return of Jesus Christ. I believe that the rapture can happen at any moment. Amen? Some believe, and you may be here this morning, and I'm not trying to pick a fight with you, but some of you are not pre-trib. I am so pre-trib that I don't even eat post-toasties. Amen? My daddy used to say that all the time. Now, folks, there's some believe that the rapture is going to happen after three and a half years of tribulation, you have your right to be wrong. But then there are some that believe in post-trib. After the seven years of tribulation, that the rapture will happen. Folks, I believe by the, by the proof of the Scripture in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10 that we're going to be saved from the wrath to come. And I believe that that wrath that it's talking about is the tribulation. Folks, this seven years of tribulation, I don't care which part you take, you can take the first three and a half years. Folks, it's going to be a terrible time that the world, that the earth has never seen before. I agree that the last three and a half years are going to be worse than the first three and a half years. But folks, a third of vegetation, a third of fresh water. Folks, there's going to be a famine in the land like you've never seen before. But Tony, are we in the tribulation now? All these ships are docked out here and the food are not coming in, our supplies. No, that's just the results of idiots in Washington. Amen? Folks, that had nothing to do with tribulation. Folks, understand the bride, which is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you look here, Jesus may come at any moment. We are not waiting on any prophecies to be fulfilled. At any moment, we could hear the shout, Here's the groom out to meet him. Amen? You let, let us consider several truths about the marriage of the Lamb as we anticipate this wonderful time. Folks, I can't, amen, I'm ready for it. I got loved ones that are in heaven today. How about you? 
Now, number one, the music will be magnificent. Amen? How many of y'all like music? I love music. I love, I love to hear good music. Now, look at Revelation chapter 19. Look at verse 1 through verse 6. Boy, I, get a run, I have a runaway when I read some of this. Because, man, I can't. Your minds, I promise you, you cannot understand how magnificent the music's going to be. The sights are going to be. Amen? You know, I, I've made this, this compliment or this comment so many times. How many of you, I think Montana is probably one of the most beautiful states I've ever been to. Amen? I love Montana, Wyoming. I know Wyoming's flat and all that. But, you know, there's some parts of Wyoming are beautiful. I have a friend of mine that owns Cody Ranch in Wyoming. Uh, he's from a church that I used to pastor in Whitehall. He retired. The woke, I'm, on, I'm just going to let you a little, little tidbit. He stood up for Christ in the school there at Whitehall and got uh, persecuted for it. He retired, left, and moved to Wyoming. Bought a ranch there. Amen. Him and his son run it. So if you ever threw Cody, Wyoming, he owns Cody Ranch uh, in Wyoming. Beautiful place. Ride horses, hunt, do all that stuff. I'll be there directly. I know he's watching this morning. But you'll look here, look at verse 6. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, Sa salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore. We're not going to get into all that, but which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia! And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye His servants, and ye that fear Him, both small and great. And let's look at verse 6 again. And I heard as it were the of a great multitude voice of many waters and the voice of a mighty thunder. Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Woo! Man, that ought to fire you up. If I don't light your wood, your wood's wet. You ain't got no wood. But you'll look here in this scripture, the music will be magnificent. I promise you, you have never heard anything like it. What do you think about the wedding music that's going to be there? Amen? Revelation 19 is the basis, and I want you to think about this. It's the basis of Handel's great composition that is known around the world. You know, the word hallelujah is used four times in these six verses. Y'all right, underline them. What does the word hallelujah mean? You know, Many of you know, when I study the Word of God, I ask myself a lot of questions. What does the word hallelujah mean? It comes from two Hebrew words. Hallel, meaning praise, and Yahweh, meaning Jehovah. Praise the Lord. Amen? Folks, as a side note, this word hallelujah is not used in any other place in the entire Bible. Y'all getting this? Folks, you know what? This is going to be a great time of celebration and worship. That's the reason why I tell you here at Delight, y'all listen up everybody. Folks, you know when you come here, we need to bring our worship with us. And once we get here, we need to worship in spirit and in truth. We need to be singing. We need to be praising. Say, but Tony, I'm just not that way. Folks, I believe that we need to practice now because one day we're going to praise. Two Christian men from two different countries were on a ship and they decided they needed to get away from the crowd to meditate for a little while. Each man took his Bible and was walking on the deck of the ship and they saw each other and then they saw the Word of God that each of them held in their hands. 
And at that moment, they knew they were comrades and brothers in Christ. They didn't know how to communicate until one brother said hallelujah and the other said amen. Amen. They embraced and they knew that they had the Lord Jesus Christ in common. Folks, let's look at the stanzas. We're going to look at this hallelujah chorus this morning because, again, it's, it's based on the, this chapter 19. It says the stanza 1 in the hallelujah chorus says, Hallelujah for the redemption of the saints. That's the very first stanza. In Revelation 19, 1, the people are saying hallelujah because that which was begun at Calvary was now come to full consummation. Amen? Folks, how many of you have trusted in Jesus Christ, the one that gave His only life, His life on Calvary for you? Folks, if you haven't trusted in Jesus Christ this morning and you're lost, you don't know what I'm talking about this morning. As Philippians 1, 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Also, notice that there is a great multitude giving praise to the Lamb. Folks, there will be millions and millions of people in heaven. Can you picture that in your mind? Don't you be in hell when the singing starts. Amen? Stanza number two says, Hallelujah for the retribution of the sinner. Revelation 19, verse 2 and verse 3 that we just read tells us that the multitudes are praising God because He has made things right. Everybody, Tony, what are you talking about? Folks, His justice has prevailed. Y'all getting this? Now, I know we can't see that sometimes because of the world we live in today. But one day, His justice is going to prevail. Folks, you'll find it. If you look for judgment in this world, you will not find it. Y'all listen to this. If you look for justice in the courtrooms of America or any other place on earth, you will not find it. But one of these days, He will say, Hallelujah! There is a God who will make everything right. Here stands the three. The relationship of the saved. Revelation chapter 19 verse 4 and 5 explains that God is our God. Not just the God. Y'all getting this? Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It doesn't say He is a good shepherd or a great shepherd. He says He is my shepherd. Folks, there's a difference. Folks, what a song we can sing when we believe I am His and He is mine. Hey, y'all getting this this morning? If you're getting this, say amen. If you're not getting it, y'all, I don't know what, nod your head. Maybe I can hear it rattle. I don't know. He is my God and I am His servant. I am His and He is mine. Why shouldn't we shout Hallelujah. In 1905, Charles Gabriel wrote this, What a Savior Jesus is. He is mine and I am His. He the price of sin is paid and for me atonement made. What a Savior. What a Savior. What a Savior Jesus is. I will praise Him, ever praise Him. He is mine and I am His. Y'all know, amen. Then you go to stanza four, you'll notice the rain of the Savior. Revelation 19.6 tells us that there was the voice of a vast multitude. What do you picture when you think of that sound? Perhaps a football stadium. How many of you ever been in Razorback Stadium when they're calling the hogs and they're hollering? Amen? You can't even hear yourself think. Amen? Now, how many of you have ever been at an Alabama game? When I pastored in Alabama, I had a church member said, I know that you're a Razorback fan, but I'm going to give you some free tickets, you and your son, to go watch the Alabama game. And they were playing Colorado State. And I was like, and now I know why you got rid of those tickets. We went to the game, my son and I, 
And it was 105,000 fans there in Alabama. It wasn't as loud as the hog game. Let me tell you something. All they had was, they did this. Remember that song, Sweet Home Alabama? And they go, row, tide, row. I was so sick of that. I wore my Razorback hat, and I sat in amongst 105,000 fans with my Razorback stuff on, and I had one guy make a comment about it, and he was drunk. Now, I, Randy, I don't know. You must be an LSU fan. LS. <laughs> All I got to say is we'll, we'll have a special prayer for you this morning. Oh, I love, I love to tease people. LS who? But, but you see, when we picture this, I get off the subject. I chase rabbits, I know. But, uh, but we picture the loud noise of this. You, you think about that. It says... It gives a descriptive phrase here. Y'all listen to this. It says, the sound of many waters. Now, I've never been, how many of y'all, y'all ever been to Niagara Falls? I've never been to Niagara Falls, but they say, I, I've, you know, it's really loud. And it just keeps coming and coming. So I looked at this, and because that's the thing that comes to my mind when I hear about that phrase, the, the, many, the many waters, the sound of many waters. Now, so I looked this up, Brother Terrell. It says, more than 6 million cubic feet of water rushes over the falls every minute. Y'all get that? I wonder if they turn that thing off at night. Amen? You add, now you got the sound of many waters, and I'm trying to give y'all this picture this morning. Not, Brother Tony, you're not doing a very good job. Add lightning and thunder rolling up and down the heavens to the noise of the multitude of the falling water. Y'all getting this? And one can only imagine what that will sound like. I, I, all I got to do is tell you this. Our God reigns. Amen? Every knee will bow to the one who was despised, the one that was rejected by men, and the shouts of His praise will ring through the heavens. Folks, it will be wonderful. We, will ne- we have never experienced anything like this that's going to happen in heaven. How many of y'all want to go there? You know, I had a sermon that I preached when I first come here. I, it was entitled, Everybody Singing About Heaven Ain't Going There. Folks, we have learned that God will judge the false church and now the true church will be presented to Jesus, and right now the church is only betrothed to Jesus. Y'all understand that? We are not married to Him yet. The best is yet to come. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians eleven two, 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to be one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Folks, the true church is the dearest object in all the universe to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Folks, how do I know that? Because the dearest thing on this earth to me, other than my relationship with God, is my wife. Amen? She's my bride. I love her with everything I have. And that is only a faint representation of of the love that Jesus has for us. Y'all get that? Folks, when I asked him to marry me, I'll never forget. I was working two jobs. I was a youth director at a little old church. And now that was a a get-rich-quick experience. The church paid me $50 a week. I was working 60, 70 hours a week for a company, y'all may have heard it, called Federal Express. Downtown Little Rock. I, went, I did that on a weekend. I, I did their youth and went on vacation every Saturday and on sometimes on Sunday afternoon. I got paid $50 a week. And I had to drive 45 minutes one way with no car allowance. I, didn't, I mean, I, I was doing it because I loved the Lord. Amen? I was finally able to buy Tim a little diamond ring, Brother Steve. 
I paid about $50 a month until I paid for it. How many of y'all ever been there? Some of y'all just, I was telling you, I had the cold hard cash to go, well, good for you. I had to set mine up on a payment program. $50 a month until I, they called it a layaway plan. I called it a lay awake plan. Amen? But the size of that diamond didn't matter. I mean, you really had to look at it to see the diamond. The size of our commitment far exceeded the cost of the ring. Since we are a part of the church, y'all listen to me, the bride of Christ, how are you getting ready? Amen? You know, I seen my daughter getting ready to get married to Brandon. I never forget, it's hard giving up a daughter. Brandon didn't think I was going to give her up, did you, Brandon? <laughs> Many of you didn't see this part of the wedding, but uh, we, had, we had the reveal of the wedding dress. They had their pictures made before. They revealed the wedding dress to Brandon. Well, they didn't know it. The first one out of the gate was his best man dressed up in the wedding dress. <laughs> so as he turned around, it was his best man dressed up in a wedding dress. I said, that's messed up. <laughs> Amen. But I never forget watching my daughter get, she's, she's beautiful anyway, but when she come out in that wedding dress, man, I was like, Wow. My first thoughts is she's beautiful. Number two, I said, I'm so glad she took after her mother. Because <laughs> if she didn't, she'd be a linebacker for somebody. <laughs> Let me tell you something. There's going to be a wedding one day. You know, most of the weddings here on earth focus on the bride. Let me tell you something. That day, it's going to focus on the groom. It's going to focus on Christ. Amen? Folks, it's going to be a celebration like we have never seen before. He's going to focus on Jesus. But there are some things that we need to do. Three things. Redemption. If you are not saved, we are not a part of the bride of Christ. Amen? When God saves us, we call that redemption. This is the first part of our beauty treatment as we receive the inner nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. We become partakers of of the divine nature. Then you're going to notice not only redemption, but you're going to notice the rapture. When the rapture comes, we will be changed in a moment in the likeness of Christ. All the sinful tendencies of our old sinful flesh will be left behind. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that. Then you'll notice the third, not only redemption, not only a rapture, but there's going to be a reward. We have been to the judgment seat of Christ and we will receive according to the deeds that we have done. The Bible says that the white linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Folks, this is a threefold beauty, beauty treatment. But you know, number three, I pray that you'll make it to heaven, amen? I pray that you're going to heaven this morning. Because there's not very many that's going. It says in the Word of God that there's a broad way and there's a narrow way. The narrow way is very few people that are going. But there's a broad way that's a lot of folks that's going to hell. Amen? I'm just going to tell you that. Everybody told me, I can't believe you're preaching on. Folks, there is a place called hell. And it's real. And it's burning for eternity. There will be some guests that will be glad more people than the bride will be present at the wedding of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 9. Let's turn and look, look at this. It says, And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Folks, who are these guests? Folks, these are the redeemed of all the ages who were saved before or after the church age, the Old Testament saints will be there as guests. Y'all get that? Say, but Tony, I, I don't know about that. Well, John the Baptist, it says, called himself 
a friend of the bridegroom, if you'll look at Scripture. He was a friend. He was not the bride. Jesus said, I assure you, in Matthew 11, 11, it says, I assure you among those born of women, no one is greater than John the Baptist has appeared, but the least of the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Folks, you see, there's a difference in being saved. Amen? If you're saved here today, I pray that you are scripturally baptized and a part of the local New Testament church. The bride is the church, folks. The groom is Jesus. And one day there's going to be a wedding. There is a sense in which the church is especially privileged. What a celebration it will be. At the wedding feast of Cana, Jesus performed His first miracle by turning water into wine. Y'all remember that? The master of the ceremony said in John 2.10, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then which is worse? But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Folks, if you think that is something, wait until the marriage of the Lamb. When Christ is the bridegroom and the host. Amen? Folks, I promise you, you have never seen anything like it. But you'll see here, we mentioned a while ago, the groom will be glorified. This wedding doesn't center around the bride, but on the groom. Look at verse 10 of, of Revelation 19. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You see, there was an angel here, and he fell among the, and tried to worship the angel. Let me tell you something. That tells us right there what we need to be worshiping. There's a lot of things we try to worship in this life. We have a lot of different, what I call little G-gods. We have idols. They but Tony, we're not the children of Israel. We, we're not... We're not uh, celebrating and worshiping the golden calves. Oh, but we have our idols. We have our little G-gods. We're fishing to experience, a, 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 and some of y'all experience a little G-gods and little idols on Sunday morning every time. Don't, hey, amen? Man, I'm, I'm fishing the metal here. We got something coming up on us, and y'all knew it was coming. You knew I was going to preach on this. We got hunting season coming up. We're going to see who your little G-gods are. Amen? Say, Brother Tony, I, you meddling now. I may be, but I'm right. Amen? I, don't, I believe in taking off a little bit of time, but folks, it never takes the place of worshiping and being here with God. Folks, we, I pastored a church in Rising, Arkansas, and I had them so gun-shy they would line up in the back with their orange on. They'd hunt that morning, and then they would come in and sit in. Amen. They said, Brother Tony's going to call us out. But they'd come in and go to church and, and say, Brother Tony, let me tell you something. Like I told you earlier, you worship. You bring your worship with you. You get that? Say, Brother Tony, I can worship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. This is a plug. I can worship anywhere I want to worship. Most of the time, the people that say that, you're not worshiping. Amen? Y'all get that? I love to come and be with God's people. I love to preach too much. Amen? I ran into a preacher the other day, and I'm not saying do this, church, because I, I, I had a church that tried to give me a sabbatical one time. They said, Brother Tony, take off a month. They told me to. I said, Okay. I took off a week and a half. They said, Brother Tony, how come you? I love to preach. Amen. And I love to be around God's people. I'm camping with a guy right now. He's a missionary Baptist preacher. He's, his church give him a month sabbatical. I said, man, I couldn't do that. I'm just telling you. So don't even try it. The groom will be glorified, folks. You see here in this scripture, I'm almost done, how we learn to love Jesus. The Holy Spirit persuades us 
on how we need to love Jesus. Y'all getting this? The Spirit of God, when we get saved, the, the Spirit of God comes to abide in us. It's called the Holy Spirit. You either love Jesus and love God, or you don't. Amen? Folks, I love, when I pray and I study the Word of God, the Spirit of God moves in my life, and you know, and I cannot get enough of God. I can't get enough of worshiping. I can't get enough of singing. Amen? I can't get enough of praising, and that's just in our earthly body. Let me tell you something. One of these days, we're going to be in heaven, and we're going to praise from now on. You're not just going to say we have such a, you know, the world likes to do this. We have such an a artist of the description or somebody describes what we're going to be like in heaven. And some of you, believe it or not, you think that we're going to be like an angel. We're going to have our wings and we're going to sit up on a cloud and pluck a harp. We ain't going to do that. We're going to be worshiping. And again, if you don't worship now, one of these days you'll learn. Amen. You might as well practice right now. So you'll see this in this scripture. Do you know why I love Jesus? Because he first loved me. You're going to love Jesus. He'll say he, di he died for you to have an inheritance with him in glory. 1 Peter 1.8, as I close, says, Whom having not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Again, do you know why I love Jesus? Because He first loved me. Folks, in 1873, Horatio Gates Spafford wrote these timeless words in a hymn. I love this song. It is well with my soul. It goes on, he says, And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight the clouds be rolled back as a scroll the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul we're not talking about fantasy here folks words and illustrations cannot sufficiently explain or begin to describe what heaven and what, and what Jesus will be in heaven. Are you ready? Are you saved? Have you been bab scripturally baptized by a scriptural church? Are you ready today? Amen. Say, Brother Tony, I, I, I've been saved, but I, I just I haven't taken that step of obedience. What are you waiting on? Amen. Many of you have been saved. I led some of you to the Lord but you haven't been scripturally baptized. What are you waiting for? Brother Tony, I, I, I'm waiting for the lightning to strike. Folks, give in to God. You may be here this morning, you may be a guest, but you don't know Jesus. Have you called upon the name of the Lord to save you? Folks, that's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Young people, listen to this. You know, going to college is important. Working a job is important. What you're going to do when you get out of school. Teenagers, poke, poke, perk your ears up. This old preacher's going to tell you something. All those things are important. We see that right now. Well, Brother Tony, what am I going to do when I get out of school? What college am I going to go to? How am I going to make money? Let me tell you, the most important decision is where you're going to spend eternity. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus? Maybe you're here this morning, you're saved, and you're baptized, and... You just want to be a part of this church. Let me tell you something. I love being busy. We have, and let me tell you something. I've pastored for 23 years, and I, I'm going to brag on you, church. We're busy around here. I love to be busy. We have great ministries, great leadership. People are wanting to, they, they, we love our teenagers. We took them to the fields of faith the other night. Folks, let me tell you something. Watching those teenagers be respectful Amen? And sitting there listening to those speakers. Let me tell Sister Celeste said something about it to me, and I noticed it. Folks, y'all don't notice stuff like this. There was kids running up. People were speaking and preaching. Kids were running all over the place. And I'm like, what are they doing? 
You know what our kids were doing? Listening. Folks, you know how that is? That doesn't happen overnight. That's parents, amen, and leadership teaching their kids. If your children are missing out on these stuff that our church is doing, they're missing out. Let me tell you something else, parents. This is uh, it's not even in my message. This is for free. If your kids are not involved in church activities, let me let you in on something. The devil's going to have something for them to do. I would rather have my child be involved in church activities than things out here in the world because Satan's going to have something for them to do. I've been there, done that, bought the T-shirt. Parents, amen? Praise God for our workers in our church. Amen? Praise the Lord for that. Come today. As we stand, our musicians come.